Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, notification bell and give it a thumbs up. But today we're going to have a walk around Newcastle following the route of the town wall. Our starting point is just under the high level bridge because the walls actually started near the swing bridge. We're going to travel west down the close which is the direction we're going to try and follow the exact route of the wall. So let's begin. Our wall was a medieval defensive wall built in the 13th and 14th century to defend the town from attack from the Scots. It had six main gates that close gate, west gate, bath gate, pilgrim gate, new gate and sand gate. It also had 17 turrets and several smaller turrets as well as posting gates. Most of the wall has been destroyed. There is still some bits, as you'll see, as we make our way around. And at the moment, we are standing roughly where close gate would be. The wall continues up towards and over Hanover Street, where Whitefriars Tower used to be, no longer exists, and then runs parallel with Orchard Street. And just behind me, You'll see one of the sections of the wall that still exists and we'll go and follow that now. As you see the wall follows Orchard Street and follows on on the back of a cart park. <laughs> You can see the thickness of the wall there. It passes through Central Station and passes where West Spittle and Stank Towers used to be and crosses Neville Street to Gunner Tower, which is now Gunner House, which is where I'm standing in front of now. We're now standing where the fourth gate used to be on Pink Lane. And behind me is the eatery and public house called the Town Wall. We now continue up Pink Lane. The wall continued up Pink Lane till we got to Westgate Road. And here's where the Westgate would be. The wall then turns on the Bathgate, and as you can see behind me, another section that's still intact. Right 
And this behind me is Durham Tower. One of the few towers that's still intact today. And is probably used as a storage space. Continue up. The wall then turns east and goes belong behind Stowell Street. You'll see more than and ever towers on this section which still exists and to my right, your left, you'll see the King's Dyke, which was a defensive trench that was built around the walls. The towers and the turrets were spaced not too far apart so archers could reach and hit anybody trying to get the walls between the turrets. And this is what remains of Eva Tower. And the wall then goes and travels behind St Andrew's Church. As you can see, the wall continues along behind St Thomas's and comes out roughly at Newgate Street and roughly at the end of this wall here, the section that's not here now is where the Newgate was, hence the name Newgate Street and then it goes, follows down the same path as Blackett Street The Newgate is where they had Newcastle's prison and condemned prisoners were taken from there up the Gallagate to the town war where they were hung. Later date, prisoners were just hung at the prison and the bodies were left hanging outside for all to see. We head down Blackett Street, we've passed Bertram Moor Butra Towers and Fickle Tower. It then heads down to what used to be Pilgrim's Gate, which is now Pilgrim Street. The wall continues down. Well, I apologise for the noise, I can't deal with that, they're working. But the wall carries on down towards what Carlisle Tower, before turning south. As you can see, it travels south. And then we come to another tower, this is Plumas Tower, which is just over my shoulder. You'll see that it's still standing there and it's... There's another section of the wall that's complete. And if you see behind me now, we've got the corner tower. The wall and then heads down by Sally Port Gate and then back down onto the quaysides, roughly near where the law courts are now. The wall 
continues down towards the river, passing Pandan Gate and Sallyport Tower before hitting and turning west at Sandgate. After hostilities with the Scots finished, the well-to-do business owners that lived along the quayside got the, this section of the wall removed so the ships and that could berth and get easy access to. The wall then comes back along the quayside, finishing roughly where the guild hall is near the swing bridge where we started back towards what they would call back end bridge end because where the swing bridge is was the only bridge at the t over the Tyne at the Tyne if you like the contents of this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button the notification bell and give it a thumbs up thanks for watching